Today, I'm gonna react to your favorite watch TikToks. It's My what's favorite. for it. Yeah, your favorite, because I'm pointing <laughs> at you, yeah. You picked them, so that's why I said you. Yeah. Before we get into the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel now. And if you wanna buy or sell your watch, there's only one place in the whole entire planet you have to go. You need to go. You want to go. You has to go. What? The luxury bazaar. <laughs> That's as well, but it's pride and pinion, of course. The crown is king, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sorry! You do what you do, because I don't know how this works. What do I need to do? Can I turn this around? Yeah. This is not good for my ADHD. ADHD. HDHD. High definition. There you go. Hyperactive. Oh my god. God! Oh my God! I lost the kettle on the train, bro, on a Eurostar. Big Wimbledon watch. He lost the kettle on the train. Where's that word kettle coming from? Is that really Londonish, British kettle? I've never heard it before this. The kettle. Like, what the f***? <laughs> Such a f f name for a watch. Come watch. Yeah, the Rolex. The Eurostar have emailed me now. I found your watch and your bracelet. Yeah! Hey, that's made my day. I found my watch, my bracelet, and got my car back. What Two a day. Years ago. Two years ago. How can you lose your car? Did he leave his car in the Hero Star as well? So he lost his watch. It's great. That's fair play. That is unreal. Like yeah, we don't talk about that, do we? <laughs> I didn't lose any watches on the boat. Hey, I swear I didn't. Just Left in there for safekeeping? Yeah, I just left in there for safekeeping, mate. I was on a ferry from France to Dublin. Everywhere I go, I bring my watches. I'm a watch guy. Of course I bring my watches. But my insurance company requires me to always directly, doesn't matter if I leave a room or don't leave a room, to put the watches in a safe. If the room doesn't have a safe, I am not insured. So I always need to make sure that the room has a safe. I was on a ferry. I needed a room with a safe, which was only the suite, unfortunately. Put the watches in there. Woke up next morning. Rushed to get to the car, forgot the watches. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't handy. Luckily, Stella Line found the watches a couple of hours later and they returned them to me. So that was amazing. Bro, my first ever watch. Oh, wow. And I got a confession to make. I cried when I lost that watch. That was the first expensive thing I bought, bro. Do you get what I'm saying? I worked hard for my dough. I cried when I lost that watch. I'm not complaining. Mate, that's unbelievable. Oh my God, that is amazing, man. That's a belter, to be fair. <laughs> hell. Well done, Eurostar, a lucky at him. That is fair fucks. Yanni was wearing a Blue Dow Skydweller and the other dude, I forgot his Philly. Young Philly was wearing a Yacht Master on the Oyster Bracelet. Lovely. Uh, when your Rolex AD calls you to collect your new watch but asks you to wear your Daytona when you've already flipped the Grona 24. <laughs> oh, this couldn't be f more accurate and I know so many people that do that shit, and I have a story about that. We get this quite often when someone calls and they ask if they can borrow a Daytona or borrow a rare watch for a day because they need to go to the AD to pick up a watch and they don't want to really come out that they've sold the watch. It is so funny. It is actually hilarious. So let me explain this. What this TikTok actually means is that, as you may know, several Rolex models on the gray market are more expensive than when you buy them in the shop. This is because there's more people that want the Rolex than that Rolex makes. Basically, it's quite hard to get a brand spec in new Rolex. They're suggesting here you can pick up your new watch, but you have to bring in that Daytona you flip with 10K profit. This happens everywhere. By the way, if you're a flipper, yeah, Brightandpinion.com. We'll buy your watch, mate. No worries. I got you. We'll sell your watch for you. We'll sell you a watch. Whatever you want. We do this. Never buy a Casio. Scumbag! Always buy a Casio. If you watch some videos that claim Casio's got, got here. Come on, they're $30. How good can they really be? So you impulse buy one without hesitating. And when it finally arrives... You're oh, I see where this is going. This is positive. Oh. Waiting comfortable, maybe a bit smaller than you thought, but then you test the accuracy over a few days. Better than your $30,000 Patek, what the? So now you kind of caught the bug and you start looking at some other Casio models. And they're so cheap, so you just keep buying. One by one, the watch box grows. Next thing you know, your watch box is full of them, and all the watches inside still cost less than your next expensive watch brand. And in some ways, they're just a lot more fun. But then you realize, you don't have a G-Shock. What are you going to do when you need a watch that's super durable? What are Resistant, shockproof, drop proof, can be ran over by a tank and survive for when you're staying home and playing Warzone. <laughs> so you get one. If you get microwave. <laughs> 
fire! It's, it's on fire! 35 minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, you want some baked strap? It didn't survive. Sorry. Then metal, then 36 millimeters, then clear. And when your partner or your parents ask if this is a new watch, of course you tell them, no, no way. This is the same Casio I've been wearing all month. I couldn't have said it better. I could have made a better video. That is true. That's also a really good creator, by the way, on TikTok. This is what I've been saying for all those years. Glad other people are saying it now. I want to say a couple of things. Hugo was the first brand to attach a rubber strap to a precious metal case yes. in, as a luxury sports watch. Hublot was the first brand to do a sapphire case and sapphire bracelet. Now very popular with a lot of luxury brands. Number three, very popular now for God tier brands, Nico. God tier brands to do colored ceramic. Done first by Hublot. First, first, first. If a watch brand becomes massively important because they were the first one to ever put a rubber strap on a watch, I mean, that's quite pathetic, isn't it? Louis Breguet, first Tour Blion, Rolex, first waterproof watch. I mean, these are things that actually add value. A rubber strap doesn't really add value. That actually takes away value, to be completely honest. It's basically Hublot trying to save some money on a bracelet. And by the way, they sell it for the same Right. First ever to use a sapphire case. I still, I'm still wondering why the f would I want a watch that is transparent and has a sapphire case? You explain me. Because in any way, shape or form, that is the most chaviest thing I've ever seen in my life. Why do I want to see my own wrist? It's not a f novelty. I mean, it's synthetic sapphire. Fake Sapphire, man-made sapphire. It's not interesting. And when a watch breaks, the owner of the watch is f Because it's f expensive to repair. Same, by the way, with colored ceramic. First for doing that, f***ing amazing. Is that really why Hublot is a f***ing important watch brand? Because they do that? That's not innovation. That is cost saving, first, with a rubber strap, and the other two is just blatantly pointless. Hublot is absolute f***ing dog sh Have no history, and this doesn't make any sense. If you think that, that Hublot is a luxury brand because of this sh I mean, Andrew, I love you to bits but you couldn't be more wrong. I'm here with Noah. He really wants to buy this watch for me. And I told him I'd give it to him for 50% off if he makes this putt right here. But if he misses, he has to pay me a little bit over the asking price. This is it. This is his only What watch is it? Like what watch is it actually? Is it Casio? What, what? Oh, it's a Cartier Santos. And I told him I'd give it to him for 50% off if he makes this putt right here. 50% off of retail. Yeah, but that watch is worth 50% off retail. I mean, it is what it is. But if he misses, he has to pay me a little bit. It's a big butt. Over the asking price. This is it. This is his only chance. What a house, by the way. Honestly. What a great pot that is. Holy f that guy is f***ing mad! Oh my god! Shut the f*** up! Shut the f*** up! Shut the f*** up! That was f***ing insane. Who is that guy? Noah Beck. Oh yeah, he said that, but I don't know who Noah Beck is. F***ing great golfer anyway. Jesus f***ing Christ, that's a hell of a bot. F***ing hell. He then gets shafted after to buy that watch 50% off retail, but it is what it is. Yo, it's good, guys. Look at the watch. It is nuts. Ooh! Ice on my wrist <laughs> will freeze your brain. Sheesh! I love this guy. Let me hit my jig real quick. Woo. Hey, $15. $15 off Etsy. What y'all know about that? <laughs> that guy is a G, mate. That guy is a G. I love that. I've seen him before. He's funny as I really love that vibe. Doesn't give a fuck. Just does whatever he does. What do you think watch? Uh, better than Hublot. No, don't buy a watch at Etsy, guys. Come on. Add a little bit of spice. That's both Rolex, mate. <laughs> I mean, it's vintage Rolex and it's Rolex. Because without those models, the modern models wouldn't be there. And without the modern models, Rolex is gone. We call that innovation. We call that, what does, how do you call something that goes through time? We just call that growing up. I wanna watch this game. What do you think Rolex is? I think Rolex is a watch brand. I was right, there's a watch. And a little bit of what Rolex really is. It's not a watch brand then, no? Spice. 
vintage watches, yeah? No, fair play, really good, completely understand what you're saying, fantastic. We call this evolution. Right, let me explain this, right? I do get where he's coming from, but let me explain this. I love vintage watches more than I love modern watches, it is what it is. But modern watches are the evolution of their vintage counterparts. One day they will be vintage, Stu and Rolex will be wherever the f*** they will be, right? But this is what we call evolution, because the fact is that you're making a TikTok about watches is because in some way, shape or form, Rolex has touched your heart. If they didn't make those vintage watches, the modern watches wouldn't be there. If they didn't make those modern watches, there wouldn't be a hype there. If there wasn't a hype, it wouldn't have touched your heart and we wouldn't make videos. It all goes hand in hand, you see what I mean? But vintage watches is what I prefer significantly more, personally, because there's character, there's story. Like, can you imagine having a watch on your wrist of 50, 40 years old? That watch had a life previously to you, right? Normally you want things brand spanking new, like your wife, like your, yeah. I love vintage stuff, I love pre-owned stuff, but if you, for example, compare that with relationships. Like, relationship with watches and women, for example, it's quite similar bar one thing. With watches, you like that, like a watch to have a history. You love that a watch is passed around loads of guys. With a woman, it's a wee bit different, right? I mean, I don't really like my woman to be passed around by many dudes anyway, but with vintage watches, the value is not in the materials, it's in the story, it's in the rarity. Most of all, for me, it is who has worn that watch. I get where he's going. Vintage watches are cool. This is just a lot of balls. If this gives you a root, or if you actually enjoy watching this, I think uh, you have a problem. ASMR, yeah. I don't give a f If there's not a woman whispering in my, in my ear, I don't want to hear it. Tudor's poor man's Rolex. Tudor is the perfect middle ground between affordable and luxury watches. Everyone should have one. That's value for money there. Love that watch. Tudor Black Bay Dark. Don't like it, don't like it, don't like it, but it is value for money. I don't think 15 on a quid is correct, but Royale Day Date, lovely watch as well. That is value for money, 2,210 pounds. Name me a Omega that's better than that shit. Omega sticking up your hole. Tudor Submariner Snowflake, that's a vintage watch. 10,000 points. I think you can actually get it a wee bit cheaper. Black Bay 54, it's a wee bit too small for me. Nice watch though, yeah. Like, I mean, this is Tudor. Like, Tudor made some ugly watches in the past, but it's not really an ugly Tudor anymore. My boyfriend got the same watch as you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Pride and subscribe.